Okay, we have a purple apple. We have a purple apple. Let's see if reversing a linked list works. As soon as I eat that apple, that purple apple, my snake should get reversed and it should go in the opposite direction and reversing a linked list will have worked in a real production grade apple. Wait, did I? What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna be building a snake game from scratch in JavaScript and React for your entertainment. I think it's gonna be really exciting. What's gonna make it particularly exciting is the fact that I think I'm gonna use a linked list and I might even be reversing a linked list to build this project out. I swear you're gonna have to stay tuned for that. And yeah, I just think it's gonna be a fun project. Lately, I feel like all the coding I've been doing has been coding for work. I've been doing algorithms for my company Algo Expert, building the UI for Algo Expert. By the way, if you're a software engineer preparing for your coding interviews or your systems design interviews, then do check out my company Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C -L -E -M, for a discount on the platform. But yeah, I just feel like I've been only coding for work. I haven't really been coding for fun. This project, I think, is gonna be pretty fun to code out. I don't know why I've been kind of obsessed with building out my own snake game for the past few weeks. I think I might have seen like a video online or a Twitter post online about a snake game and I've just been thinking about you know, how am I going to represent the snake in code, the board in code. Just really excited about this. And also I think that this is going to be a really good beginner to medium project for anybody who's into web development. You'll see we're going to build this entirely with JavaScript and React. This is kind of going to be like a tutorial because I'm kind of going to you know, show you my code and walk you through it. Although I will also speed run through it. And then all the code will be on GitHub for you to look at, fork, copy paste, whatever you want to do. So with that, Let's jump into this project and let's have some fun coding. So I guess the first thing that I should do is just show you what it is that we're building, just in case you're not familiar with the snake game. So I found a random version of the snake game online. I'll play it right now as I describe it. So basically in the snake game, you are a snake on a 2D board and usually you see kind of the outlines of the squares in the board, but here I guess you don't. And the goal of the game is you control this snake and you have to eat the food that kind of randomly appears on the screen. So here it's this little like gear icon or flower icon. And whenever you eat the food, your snake gets bigger. And whoops, okay, I lost. <laughs> I'll go faster. They've got a couple of different speeds here. Um, but so basically like if you ever hit the wall or if you ever hit yourself, like your own tail, for example, or your own body, you lose. And the goal of the game is just to get, you know, as high a score as possible. And your snake grows really, really big as time goes on. Um, so that's gonna be the game. That's what we're building. So let me just kill myself here one second. I'll eat my, you see, I, I kind of like looped and ate my own body and so I died. And so yeah, that's what we're building. Pure JavaScript, pure React. Now, how are we building this? Well, first of all, I used something called the Create React App NPM package or whatever it is. It basically is an awesome tool that I think you only need to have NPM installed to actually use. And then you run one command that installs everything you need from Create React App. It sets up a directory and a project basically with React and everything you know installed. Everything updates automatically when you save, you see it in your browser. I'll put a link to the Create React app page in the description below so that you can you know, go to it and basically follow their instructions to set everything up. But then here in my VS Code project, I've deleted a few of the, the files that they had created that I didn't really need, like test files and things like that. Basically, we've got this app component here. This is our main uh, app file. And here it renders a board. So this is a component that I've created myself. As you can see here, it's an empty component and this is where all of our code is gonna go. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need any other components, but we'll see. And then I've got this uh, board CSS file that's gonna be the CSS file for our board. And I guess there's also this app CSS file. This is like their code. And so you can see in my screen here, this is, this is like the, the, the app. Um, this is their background, you know, this is like the, the color of the background, background color here. And so if I put in my board something like, you know, foo bar, it should appear in the middle. There you go, foo bar. The last couple of things to show you is I also pre-created this utils file where I copy pasted a function to generate a random number from an interval in JavaScript. I got this from Stack Overflow. The reason I did that is because I know already that we're gonna need some sort of random number generation uh, when we try to figure out where the food 
pops up on the board. Uh, but apart from that, I don't think I'm going to be needing, you know, Google or Stack Overflow. We'll see. Um, but this is the thing that I knew I needed, you know, preemptively. And yeah, that's really it. So I'm going to close out to these, um, these other files that they've created, you know, like app and index.js that renders the app. All we're going to be working on or with is this board file. And uh, the last thing I guess that I'll show you is this notes file that I created, this text file. Just a few notes of like what I think we're gonna be building out for this project or the different components. So first we're gonna wanna create the board. I think we're gonna represent this as a matrix, you know, 2D array, two dimensional array in JavaScript, pretty simple. Then we're gonna wanna create the snake. So here, this is where I think we're gonna be using a singly linked list for the snake. And that's how I envisioned it. And we're gonna to have to handle, you know, growing the snake. So it'll be like adding a node to the linked list. Um, I think we're gonna add, you know, something fun where, you know, randomly the food can make the snake reverse its direction. Cause I've seen some versions of the game where like, you know, every now and then your your food that you have to eat is like poison or something. And instead of making your snake grow, it just reverses your direction. And so that's where I think we're gonna use legitimately reversing a linked list. We'll see if it actually works out. Then of course the styles, we're gonna have to handle the actual movement of the snake, which is automatic. Like the, the snake moves every like second or half a second or whatever. The key presses, like when you change direction, uh, consuming food, and I guess making the food like appear randomly, handling the, our death. If we go out of bounds, you know, hit a border or if we like eat ourselves. Um, the score, although maybe I won't do that, we'll see. I guess that's just like a counter. And then yeah, just handling, starting the game and resetting the game. So these are all of our to-dos. I think that I should be able to get through this in like a couple of hours at most without Google or Stack Overflow, we will see. And uh, let's begin by creating the board. So I'm gonna go ahead and create it and I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so I think I've got my board created here. This was pretty simple. I've done this a lot in the past with like my pathfinding visualizer project where I also had a, a 2D grid. So I kind of know how to do this. Basically, I created a board variable um, in React. So this is gonna be like a state variable in case we you know, need to access it easily or update it or something. And um, it basically creates a new two dimensional array. I've got a constant um, for the size of the array. So right now we're doing like a 10 by 10 board. So I guess, you know, 100 cells. And uh, yeah, that's that's really it. Then I iterate through the board, map you know every row to an element. Then for every row, I map every cell to an element. And so I've got three classes, board, row, cell. And then my, my cells is where I have most of my styles. So right now they're 50 pixels. This might be a little bit too big, uh, but we'll see. And I've got an outline. And then I also put an outline on the board um, because otherwise, like if I didn't have an outline on the board, for some reason, my my outer outline was um, was like not thick enough because I guess like the inner outlines of the cells kind of overlap, whatever. I don't want to go too fancy. So I'm just putting an outline on the board and this is what it looks like right now. I'm going to go ahead and already create the styles for the snake cells and the food cells just so that we have them already created. And then I'm going to create the kind of internal representation of the snake. Okay, so this is what the snake cell is gonna look like for now, just a simple kind of green color. Uh, basically, I added a class, you know, snake cell and food cell, just gave them a background color. And here I made it such that, you know, for the class name of the cell element right here, um, there's gonna be some sort of condition that determines whether this is a snake cell or maybe, you know, a food cell, in which case it'll be red. Maybe I'll choose like a less bright red. Um, or if it's just a cell, like if I put a false here, false, then it'll be back to normal. Okay, so for the snake representation and the code, I think I'm gonna go with a singly linked list. So every cell, or, or body part of the snake, I guess, is gonna be a linked list node that points to the next part in the snake. Because if you remember in the game, like when the snake moves, right, its body has to know where to go next. Like the head is pretty easy, you know, we'll have a reference of where the head is and we can figure out what the next cell the head needs to go to based on the direction that the, the snake is going. But every other node needs to go where to, or every other part of the snake's body needs to know where to go to next. And so I think that 
Having it be a linked list will be really is easy. We can just have like every node become equal to its next pointer, something like that. Um, but we will need to have access to the tail, I think, because the tail, like if we want to do that reversal, the tail will have to become the head. Um, so I think we want to have access to the tail. So I'll, I'll keep a reference to the tail for now. Maybe we won't need it actually. And yeah, let's just see if it works. I'll try to create the, the, the classes for the linked list and the nodes and uh, I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so yeah, I think that this is kind of just what I had in mind. Like I've got a singly linked list class. This is the, the class that holds references to both the head and the tail of the linked list. Again, I don't know if we'll actually need the tail, um, but then when you create a singly linked list, you pass in a value, it creates the first node in the linked list, which is gonna be both the head and the tail. And we have this linked list node class Super simple. It's just got like a, a value and a, and a dot next pointer. Now I need to figure out like, how do we actually know what cell is a snake? So let's say the snake is at, you know, in the middle of the array. I need to have either the array, like inside of, inside of like the value of a cell in the array right here needs to be maybe a, um, a, an actual node for the, for the snake, like it needs to hold it, or we need to have some sort of set or hash table that points to like whether or not um, a snake is at a particular cell. Let me play around with it and I'll show you what I come up with, you know, in five or 10 minutes. I've moved my my board uh, generation to a function. So this is a create board function that takes in the board size. And uh, to be honest, I don't think I'm using it here. Let me replace these two numbers with board size. And then it creates the two dimensional array like I did before. The only thing is it fills the two dimensional array with a counter. So every cell in the board has a unique number. It starts at one and it goes up all the way. So if I actually render the counter here, which is the cell value, cell value, you'll see that you know they all have a number. Every cell has a number. And um, that's gonna be what I'm gonna use to know where or what cell is effectively a snake cell or a food cell or something else. So then I've got a JavaScript set. Sets are kind of like hash tables. Um, they can only have unique values in them and you can access them in, in constant time. And so I've got a set that is gonna hold just numbers and these numbers are gonna be the snake body, right? Every cell that has a snake body is gonna be, or is gonna have its number in the snake cells uh, set. And so it starts out with just the number 44. I pick the number 44 because usually like when you play a game of snake, um, you know, if I start here, you remember you're like kind of in the middle, or I guess you're not necessarily in the middle, but I'm gonna go with the middle. So um, our snake here is just gonna start always at cell 44. And um, yeah, that's really all I have for now. So here, I guess like in the, um, in the code, in the React code, it says like, the, the class of a cell is cell. And then if the snake cells have the cell value that we're at, then we also add the snake cell class. And the snake cell class is what gives it the color green because we have background color green here. And then I also created my snake. Right now I'm not actually using it, but the snake is uh, just a, a new singly linked list. And I passed in the number 44. So this is gonna be the value that gets passed to the node and I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna need the value in the snake cells, but I just figure like every snake cell should know where it currently is um, in the board, I think. So that's why I did that. So now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try making, maybe I should handle like the, just the automatic movement. So maybe I'm gonna just make like the snake immediately start moving to the right or to the left, let's go with the right at first um, and uh, just see kind of like how I can update the, the number of the snake and, and kind of figure that out. And that means I'm also gonna need the directions. So I'm probably gonna create uh, the equivalent of like a TypeScript enum for directions, like up, right, right, left, uh, down, and kind of figure that out. So I'm gonna code this out and I'll get back to you when hopefully we have just a, a snake that moves to the right um, not gonna be controlling it yet, just I wanna see it kind of like move.
Okay, so this is where I'm at right now. I think I have some sort of bug because clearly there's like a snake body that's staying there. Um, but apart from that, like the movement is starting to work. I'll walk you through the code once I kind of like remove the bug, figure out what the bug is and maybe clean it up a bit. Okay, so I have this weird bug in my code. I don't really understand why it's happening. I know what's going on, but basically like the, the reference to the snake cells that I have keep being the same, even though they should be updated. Um, and it's causing the this bug where like this original cell is just always registered as a snake cell, trying to figure it out. It seems like some sort of like React bug, kind of questioning my knowledge of React right now, but we'll see if I can figure it out. Okay, so this bug, Clearly, like it's something that I'm that I'm messing up with the way set intervals work and the way references work. Because when I added a button here, I've got like a tiny button. When I click it and I call this move snake button um, function or button move snake function that I've created, it does move the snake correctly. You see, like it does it correctly. But when I have the set interval, the references seem to never get updated. So I'm going to try to figure it out. Okay, so I'm growing very frustrated because I'm still not sure why the set interval is causing like the references to my snake cells to not update properly. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna move forward and um, try to do like the kind of the rest of the game for a little bit with just this manual button that I have to click to move the snake because this works, right? If I can get some progress with that, with the manual movement, then I'll try to go back to the automatic movement and make that work. Sometimes that's what you gotta do when you're really stuck on something and it's kind of frustrating you don't really know why you're stuck move on to something else and then come back to it with a pair of fresh eyes okay so i got the directions to move or updating the directions with the arrow keys so basically right now you know i move manually right now my my snake is going down if i press the up arrow key and i move manually i'm now going up if i press the right arrow key i'll go right left i'll go left etc and the way i did it very simple i used an ad event uh listener on the the window uh apparently you have to use key down and not key press to register arrow keys when i had key press um arrow keys just weren't registering JavaScript, go figure. And yeah, very simple. I get a new direction with this function, get direction from key. So I pass in the, the event key. And if it's arrow up, I return up, arrow right, I return right. Oh, by the way, I guess I, I forgot if I told you, but I have a direction kind of a hash table that is supposed to look like a TypeScript enum uh, with up, right, down, left, and that's it. And then I, I return an empty string if the key is not one of the four arrow keys. And here I just check, you know, um, if it's a valid direction, meaning that it's not an empty string, because you can imagine the user might type, you know, any key and you don't want to, you know, update the direction incorrectly. Um, you don't want to update it to some sort of like undefined or null value. But yeah, then I set direct the direction to the new direction and voila. So I'm still kind of frustrated that I haven't figured out the um, automatic movement. But again, I don't want to stay stuck on that too long. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the um, the food. So we're going to add the, the random food position. Uh, we're going to allow my snake to eat the food. So I'll figure out, you know, what to do when the, the snake goes on the food cell. Probably want to, you know, randomly generate a, a new cell for the food and kind of figure that out. Maybe uh, for now, I will not make my snake grow yet. I'll just make my snake consume the food and move the food around. Okay, so it looks like I got my food consumption uh, mostly done, at least like, you know, consuming the food and f making the food appear elsewhere. So look, I'll, I'll move my snake manually. So I have to press the, the arrow keys and then press the button. And you can see that when I go on the, oops, what? Oh my God, this manual moving is annoying. When I go on the apple, it eats it. And whoops, I keep pressing the wrong keys. And uh, the apple goes elsewhere. See, an, a random position. Okay, I need to handle like what happens when I'm out of bounds. But um, yeah, 
So the way I did that is pretty simple. So I imported that random int from interval function that I had in my utils. And uh, when we move our snake, so I haven't walked you through the moving snake logic yet, because again, there's something kind of broken about it. But basically, I figure out where the head of the snake is, right? Then I get the next uh, head coordinates, so the coordinates of the next head of the snake, so where we would be moving. This is a pretty simple function, like based on the direction and the current uh, row and column of the snake head, which is stored in my linked list uh, node, you know, in the value, which is like a cell class. Um, I compute, you know, and get figure out what, what coordinates I need to get next, what row and column. And here I say, if my next head value, right, which is the value in the board, uh, we remember it's a unique number, uh, is my food cell, and I've created a state variable food cell here, which I started out as number 48, so the food always starts out here. If that is the next head value, so the, head, the next head would be on the food, then we handle food consumption. And handle food consumption is a pretty simple function. All it's gonna do is effectively update where the next food is gonna be. That's it, right now that's all it does, and then we'll also handle the growth of the snake. But so that's all it does right now, handles where the next food is. So it effectively replaces the current food and handles where the next food is. To figure out where the rec next food is, I use the random function. So I pick a random number between one, uh, which is the smallest number of my, my cells, because when I created the board, I started at one and the maximum cell possible cell value, which is gonna be you know, board size multiplied by board size. And I did it pretty naively. I think that in practice, this is just gonna be fine. I have a, a while true loop and I keep generating random numbers until I found one uh, or I find one that is not the current food cell and is not a current snake cell. And this will be fine. Like time complexity wise here, we're dealing with like a hundred cells. Um, even if like 90 cells were, well, I guess, okay. If, if 90 cells were the snake, maybe this will be, maybe I'll have to like change this as our snake gets bigger and bigger. Cause maybe then, you know, like if you only have a 5% chance of getting the right number, maybe that'll be bad um, or an unused number. But for now it's fine, right? For now, the odds of getting an unused uh, you know, number for the food cell are pretty high. So let me take a look at my notes. So I've done the board. We can mark that off as an X. I've done kind of the snake. I haven't done the snake growth. I haven't done the re uh, direction reversal. I've done the styles, right? Done the styles. I've done the key presses. Um, I haven't quite handled the movements. I've handled the food consumption, but again, not the snake growth. Um, I should handle maybe the death and maybe handle um, the score. So the score should be pretty easy. I'll, I'll handle the score now. I'll handle um, the death and then I'll handle the, the game start and game reset. Okay, so I tried cleaning up my code a little bit, renaming some stuff, removing some code that I didn't really need that I had before, and now I have a bug that I didn't have before. The frustration of coding. Oh my God, I was literally going crazy. I was wondering why is my code suddenly not working? Like it was working perfectly fine before I was rereading it, it was working. And I just realized it's because I keep calling handle game over. The bug is that I keep calling handle game over. So I keep resetting the game at every movement. Ah, 20 minutes on this. And here is the bug. I have this is out of bounds function that I call to see if I should handle, you know, game over. And I am doing call or zero instead of call less than zero. That's the bug. Okay, so I've got kind of a, a simple game over mechanism where if I die, like if I touch myself, that sounded really weird, but if I if the snake eats itself and if I go out of bounds uh, or, or if I go out of bounds, then it just resets the board and resets the score. I'll probably make this a little bit more polished so that you can actually like see your score at the very end and see like 
you know, how big your snake is. Again, that sounds very awkward, but uh, um, you get the idea. And right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep doing the manual movement thing and I'm gonna just try to uh, grow the snake. And we're gonna see if I can do that. If I can do that manually, then I'm gonna have to uh, move forward to try to fix that bug that I have. So let's dive into it. But first, let me get a coffee refill. And I'm out of coffee, so yes, Red Bull it is. Red Bull, sponsor me. Oh. Okay. So I'm realizing that the snake movement is pretty complicated or a little bit more complicated. This is where the length list comes into play when you have multiple cells that constitute the body of the snake. So what I think I'm gonna do is before I even handle just making the snake grow, I'm gonna handle like making the snake move if it's more than just one square. So I'm gonna default my snake to have a size of like three or four just to play around with it. And I might make my board a little bit bigger with slightly smaller cell sizes. Okay, looks like I have another bug where like it starts out here. This is, I guess, cell 48. But for some reason, when I move it manually, it goes to some random place. I'm not really sure why. Um, and here it just goes back to the top. Like it just goes in this loop. When we have such a big square, so I'm gonna look into why that's happening. It's because I can't hard code the row and the column with the value. Like I was hard coding that the cell value of the snake to begin with was always 44, but I was also hard coding the row and the columns and it just kind of like messes up everything. It only worked for a 10 by 10 board. So I'm gonna have to fix that now. Okay, so I've handled it such that no matter what your board size is, um, the snake and the food cells will be positioned correctly at the beginning. I'm gonna have to clean up this code because it's starting to look a little bit messy, but for now I'm gonna keep going. And right now I wanna, what did I say? I wanna make my snake of size three or four to start and uh, just to kind of handle the movement of a snake of size three or four. So let's see. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my snake uh, grow manually with a button. So I'm gonna press a button that's gonna keep adding like nodes to my snake. And I guess I'll probably be able to reuse that logic later on when I need to actually do that uh, with the food consumption. So that's what I'm gonna go with, I guess, because creating like new linkless nodes is, is surprisingly like difficult, even if I wanna just like start it at, you know, length three or something with the way that I'm doing it. So I think this is gonna make a little bit more sense. Okay, so that was a lot of code. I'll show you what I've got so far. So I can grow the snake manually by pressing this button. It grows it from the back, so it adds to its tail. So if this is a linked list, I'll show you in a second in the code, but basically we update the tail of the linked list. We create a new node and we set the new tail of the linked list as that new node, update its pointer to the previous tail, and that's it. And so by the way, this confirms the fact that we do indeed need the tail of the snake or a reference to it, both the head and the tail, because when we grow it, we grow it from the back. And so the way that I have it so far is um, when, I, when I grow the snake, it keeps growing from the back. And if you're ever at a point where the snake is gonna like can't grow from the back because you reach a border, I was gonna handle that and like find another direction to grow in, but I decided to keep things simple and to just like not do anything. So right now, if I spam the button here, it's not gonna, grow from the back anymore um, until like a space frees up. Cause it's a bit too complicated to try to find like a free cell. Cause you could imagine scenarios where like your snake is wrapped around in a way that there are no free cells and you would grow into yourself. And I just don't want to handle that. So basically like if you can't grow, in one direction from the back, then um, you know, you're know you not gonna grow. And you can't see it right here, but the way that it works is like, if the snake is kind of curved, you will grow in the direction opposite that the tail is pointing in. So I guess let me just show you the code really quickly. There's a lot of stuff here, but I've got this grow snake function defined, right? So the grow snake, and I get 
the growth node coordinates, so the row and column of the growth node, the node that I'm about to add. So this is this function, get growth node. I pass the tail in the direction. So here, first I get the, the direction of the next node of the tail. So that way I know if the tail here is the tail's next node like to the right, is it to the left? And based on that, I'm gonna grow in the opposite direction, right? So that if the snake is curved, and the tail, like even if the head and the entire body is going to the right, let's say, but if the tail is curved in such a way that the tail is going to the left still, then you wanna get the opposite direction of that. And you have to handle the case where like, um, you know, you only have one node and so the, the there is no next node. So that's kind of how I handle the code here. I'm not gonna walk you through that. I guess you can look at it in GitHub if you want. Um, so then growth direction is get opposite direction of the tail's next node. Then I get the um, current tail coordinates, I get the, um, the growth node coordinates, and I return them here. And so then um, I create a new node for the new tail, right? Create a new node. And I set the current tail to be the current snake tail, so I keep a reference to that. Update snake.tail to be the new tail. And then I do snake.tail.next, so new tail.next points to the current tail that I kept a reference to. That way, the tail of our, uh, the new tail, the new node that we added of our snake points to the old tail. And so our snake grows like that. And so it seems to be just working right now. So now I should handle actually moving the snake. Because right now if I press move manually, oh wait, whoa. Hey, it is working. <laughs> Why is it working? I feel like I didn't handle that. Um, not sure why the entire body is moving, but I will, I will try to look in the code to see why it's just working magically, but that's awesome. Okay, so I'll, I'm gonna just look into the code and I'll let you know what's going on. Okay, so I know why it's moving just seamlessly even with multiple nodes, it's because earlier what I had done is find a new head for the snake, right? But then I would remove its tail. I would cut off its tail like in the code, right? Obviously conceptually, you're moving the snake. In the code, all that I'm doing is adding a new head and slicing off the tail. That's what I'm doing here, you know, where I say like um, snake.tail equals snake.tail.next and I remove, I delete uh, snake.tail.value.cell from our set of snake cells. And so that's why it just like seamlessly removes it from the, um, from the body when I move. But so, so you see like if I refresh, let me grow the snake. If I move, it's creating a new head and removing the old tail. So move, creates a new head, removes the old tail. And it looks like the snake is moving. Now I need to handle like growing the snake, because that kind of breaks it. And then I think I need to handle, like if I move here and I go down, down. Oh yeah, okay, so this, okay, so something broke there, but it kind of works. Uh, it's annoying that it broke, because like, I feel like it shouldn't have broken. So if I go up, boom, right. Okay, so there's definitely something, there, there are a few quirks that I need to, to figure out. Um, but for the most part, it's kind of working. So I'm gonna dive into it and let's see if I can figure it out. Okay, so I seem to have gotten it to work. All that I needed to do, and I think that's what was causing like all the bugs, was I needed to make sure that um, the current head, like when you move and I create a new head, I needed to make sure that the current head now points to the new head. So I grabbed a reference to current head and did current head dot next equals new head. Um, once I've put the new head in the in the snake. Kind of the same thing as for the tail. Like the tail, I have to put the new tails dot next to point to the current tail or the like previous tail, right? Same thing for the head. You want the current head to point to the new head because eventually, like the way that my linked list is working, right? Is eventually the tail of the snake will reach this current head as you move. And I think that's what was bugging, right? Like what was bugging, like, look, if I remove this actually, let me just confirm this. Uh, let's remove current head.next. That's what, that's what really fixes it. If I grow the snake a bunch, 
right? And I move manually like four times. Wait, let me let me do this. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. It break. You see, it breaks after three movements because suddenly one of the next pointers is just incorrect. So after three movements, one, two, three. One, two, three. The third, the fourth movement is broken. This is what fixes it. And same, by the way, in the other directions, right? If I, let's say I do one, two, three, and I go one, two, then I go up, one, up. You see, the fourth movement is broken. So you gotta keep updating the, these next pointers, linked lists, this is how they work. See, algorithms are useful, data structures are useful. Okay, so growing, it just works, nice. Now, let's see if we can handle the actual uh, growth of the snake without doing the manual growth. Let's see if we can handle it uh, when we eat the food, because right now I'm not really handling that, and let's just get that working. Okay, so I think I have it mostly working. Like it grows as I go into the food. Um, the way that I did it is I just went off my prior logic. Look, it's working, it's working super well. Now I just need to do the actual automatic movement. But so the logic is very similar as, uh, to before. Basically like I create the new head as I'm moving the snake, right? This is all the new head logic. And then if I see that I've consumed the food, I had this logic before, but now I moved it below. If I see that I've consumed the food, not only do, the, do I handle the food consumption, which is like, you know, move the, find a new position for the food and move it there, right? Very simple function. But I also call that grow snake function that I had, the one that I can press manually here, which just broke, just broke. Oh, I know why it broke. Um, why? Because I'm passing it the new snake's, snake cells. Because if you remember, when we're moving the head, right, we have to, like re-update in React the snake cells by calling the set uh, snake cells function right here. Um, and here what was, there were bugs happening because in grow snake, I also call this same function set snake cells. Um, and so updating the React state twice in a row like with, with two different things, just it's weird because it's kind of async. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm passing in the new snake cells that I've already created with the new head and with the new deleted tail, um, if I've consumed the food. And in this grow snake function, I use these new snake cells as a reference rather than like relying on the previous snake cells, if that makes sense. Otherwise, if I haven't consumed food, then I just update the snake cells with this. So I'm now gonna remove, I guess, this grow manual grow button, and I'm gonna try to figure out that bug with the automatic movement, and I think that'll be all I need, except, oh, I guess reversing the linked list. I should probably reverse the linked list. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, I'll try to figure the bug out first, and then I'll do the reversing the linked list at the very end, because uh, that'll be fun. was trying to debug the whole like bug that I had with the movement that wasn't working automatically. Turns out it had to do with the set interval method and making it declarative to work with React uh, hooks. So I found this article that I think is written by Dan Abramov, the, the guy who created um, React or who's like one of the big developers of React. I forgot. I'm not sure if it's him, but either way, um, I copied this code here, uh, use interval that is a little bit of a fancy way to use set interval and make it declarative with React hooks and all that. So, you know, you can read it at your own leisure, but here it is in my utils. And so now I have it here. I can use use interval uh, with a 150 millisecond interval and call the move snake function, which is what I was trying to do up here in my use effect. And so if we save this, it actually works. See, if I refresh, it actually like moves automatically. And so we have our working snake game now. So I think I'm gonna spend the last few minutes uh, doing the whole like reversal of direction of the snake. So I'm probably gonna make it such that like when a new food gets created, you have, I don't know, a 20% chance or something of being uh, reversed in the opposite direction. Oh, I lost. Uh, reverse in the opposite direction. So we're literally gonna reverse a linked list. 
And we'll see if that actually works as I wanted to. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is just kind of more elegantly handle starting the game and ending the game just so that, you know, it's not like super janky. And then I think I'm probably going to call it because I've been working on this for quite a while. So let's get after it. Okay, so I made it such that there is a 20% uh, chance when I consume a food and I find the new food location that I'm going to make that new food location be one that should reverse the direction, right? This is the thing. Ne next food should reverse the direction. Math out random less than 0 0.2, so 20% chance. And if it is uh, one that reverses the direction, its color is going to be purple. And so I think the way I'm going to handle this is just here. When we handle the food consumption, I'm just going to say, hey, if right now this food should reverse the direction, then we're going to call a method uh, named reverse snake. And it's literally just going to reverse the length list. And I think that's all we need to do because we're still, you know, setting the snake cells that are in our set um, here. So yeah, this reverse snake function, I think I'm going to copy paste the reverse linked list method that we have on algo expert, great algo expert plug, use a promo code clamclem for discount on the platform. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple of lines to handle the fact that our linked link, link list class excuse me, unlike the one on Algo Expert. On Algo Expert, we just have these nodes. Here, I'm actually using a, a, a wrapper class that has access to the head and the tail. So I'm gonna have to kind of like invert those, but that's about it. So let's go get the code from Algo Expert and then copy paste it here. Okay, so I have the reverse linked list code uh, copied from Algo Expert. I really think this is gonna be super easy, which is gonna be awesome. So reverse snake, let's define this right here const reverse snake equals like this. So uh, this is the method, reverse length list. I'm actually gonna put it in our utils right, as well, right? So export uh, function reverse length list. It takes in the head of a singly linked list. So I'm gonna pass in the head and the, the head node is the same thing as the one that we have on algo expert. Just a node with a dot next and a value. So uh, reverse linked list. We are gonna import it up here. We'll put it in the middle, alphabetical order. And so reverse link the list, reverse snake, where are we here? Okay, so I think I'm just gonna call reverse link the list of snake.head. I think that's all we need to do, right? And then we're just gonna do um, snake, so const snake head equals snake.head. We'll do snake dot head equals snake dot tail, and then we'll do snake dot tail equals snake head, right? We're just swapping those two variables with those two pointers. And I believe that, that is all we need to do. Oh, and then we need to reverse the direction. So I'm gonna do um, set direction and, ooh, okay, so this is actually tricky. Set direction, because we, we need to update the direction, right? We, we don't want to be going in the same direction. So we want to be going not just the opposite direction that we're currently going in, we have to be going the opposite direction of the tail, right? Because remember, it's the same thing as when I was um, like growing the, growing the, the um, snake, right? When we grow the snake, we have to grow in the opposite direction of the tail. So I'm gonna have to do a tiny bit of fancy logic here. Give me one second. I basically copied the code that I had for the for the growth logic to get the, the direction that the tail is kind of coming from. Um, and I'm setting the direction right before reversing the linked list. The only thing is here, I think we might have like, we might have some bugs or I might need to handle like if the tail is against a wall or something. Uh, but to be honest, like I just don't wanna, don't wanna think about that right now or don't wanna handle it. I don't think it's worth kind of spending my time. I will leave that as an exercise for the viewer, whoever wants to like, pick up this project. But listen, I'm excited to see if this reversing of linked list just works. If it does, I'm gonna be super happy. So let's test it out. All right, so the game, okay, so the game starts right immediately because I haven't done the, the, the polish there. So okay, right now let's just grow. Let's wait until we get a purple apple. I think the purple apple logic works. Okay, I'm bad at snake, okay. Okay, okay, let's wait for the, okay, we have a purple apple. We have a purple apple. Let's see if reversing a linked list works. As soon as I eat that apple, that purple apple, 
my snake should get reversed and it should go in the opposite direction and reversing a linked list will have worked in a real production grade app. Wait, did I? I didn't see what happened. What'd I do? Okay, let me, <laughs> let me just restart. I guess there was some sort of bug, but I don't think I ate it, right? I didn't see if I ate it. Okay, let's just restart. I was saying reversing a linked list will have worked in a real production grade application. I'm so bad at this game. Okay, let me grow. Oh my God. Okay, let me restart. Come on. Okay, ready, ready, ready. Am I gonna get reversed? Wait, let me give myself a bit of space. Let's go ahead from the right, like, like this. Oh, that did not. Well, that didn't work. Well, my body is still there. <laughs> Wait, am I gonna have a second snake? <laughs> Wait, what's happening? Okay, I'm probably not updating a certain pointer. Oh, I know why, I know why, I know why. The reason it wasn't working is because on Algo Expert, the head of the linked list is what I'm considering here the tail. You see, this is a very important, actually, like, lesson for coding interviews, just in production. Always think, what exactly are you naming the head or the tail? Like here, what I'm calling the tail here should have been called the head. It just makes more sense that the head of the snake is what's at the beginning. But that's why here I didn't even realize what I did when I moved reverse linked list at the top. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm reversing snake dot, here I'm passing snake dot tail, that is the actual head of the linked list. So this is why it's working, it makes sense. And so yes, we now have our perfectly fine uh, board. I'm not gonna polish it, I'm just gonna fix the, um, the reversing because right now I've made it reverse all the time. Okay, so I think we have our snake game working now. This is sort of the final version. I guess let me remove this button, the move manually button. This is the final sort of unpolished version, but I can't spend much more time on this game. But as you can see, there is a 30% chance that the food is gonna be purple, which means that your direction will be reversed. So you have to make sure to uh, account for that when you eat it. And yeah, otherwise the snake game is working. You can change the speed um, in the code with the interval. This would probably be something that you'd wanna add, maybe like a speed slider. Whoa, I got reversed, okay. Gonna get reversed again here, okay, reversed. We're gonna get reversed again here. This is so nice. The snake game, oh, no, I, I messed up. Um, there are a couple bugs. One bug is uh, right now I didn't make it, or I tried to, but there was a bug with it, uh, go in the opposite direction. So right now, like, if I were to go left right now, yeah, you see, it, it killed me. Um, that's not supposed to happen, but I will leave it as an exercise to the viewer to fix that. And otherwise the code, like I said, will be on GitHub. I would encourage you to pull it, fork it, copy paste it, whatever you wanna do, and try to build your own version of this snake game. This was quite fun. Um, let's see what my high score can be. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this project. Uh, it ended up taking me more like I died. It ended up taking me more like five hours, um, but I had a lot of fun building it. I think that this is a great project that you can show to you know recruiters or other engineers. They can you know play with it. Uh, you can host it easily on GitHub so that they can just go and play with it. And yeah, it's just a fun project. Um, teaches you a lot about React and vanilla JavaScript and all that. It's actually a decent amount of code. Like I wrote, how much code did I write? You know, 300 lines of React here, then the utils file, a little bit of CSS, very little CSS. But yeah, fun all around. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button if you learned something or if you found this entertaining. Uh, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures, and otherwise I will see you in the next video.